In part 3, we calculate the angle VAC. Okay, let's go back to our Google SketchUp and we're going to look at it where we were previously. V, v to A to C is the angle we're going to look at. And funny enough, that angle is exactly the same as the angle that we had created by our right angle triangle here. So if we rotate that round, how we look at that angle is from the side here. This is the right angle triangle we're dealing with, height 5.0. Um, remember the base, if you can remember from the last question, is square root of 72, I think, over 2. We'll look at that in a minute. Um, and we found that the length of that diagonal there was a square root of 43. So we're going to use that triangle to do this problem. So here we go. Yes, it was a square root of 72 over 2. And let's just give ourselves a bit more space to work with and because we're going to use trigonometry we're going to use this little diagram here to help us and it gives us our so care toa if you can remember that and we're going to be looking at this angle here to be our angle so this angle will this side will become the hypotenuse this side will be our opposite and this side will be our adjacent now i'm going to put in the answer from our last one because um we're going to use a different formula we keep using um and the answer to h was we found out in the last part of the question was square root of 43 so i'm going to look at using We've done sine and tan version, so I'm going to look, show you how we pick out the cos1. And the cos1 comes from when you deal with adjacent and hypotenuse. So we're looking at adjacent and hypotenuse. Which of the formulas have adjacent and hypotenuse in them? This one doesn't. This one doesn't. But the cos1 does. There's the adjacent, and there is the hypotenuse. So that is the formula we're going to use to do this question. So let's write it out. Cos of our angle equals adjacent over the hypotenuse. And the adjacent is root 72 over 2. Oops. And we're going to divide all of that by the square root of 43. So let's get our calculator up so we can do that. It's much easier doing with a calculator. That was my square root of 43. So I'm just going to clear that. That's the answer. And I'm just going to type in the square root of 72. Let's get outside the square root. Notice that was inside the square root. And we're just going to divide that by 2. And... Let's just put some brackets in there and we just need to go back and I forgot to put bracket in here because I want to divide all of this. Okay, the square root of 72 divided by 2 by the square root of 43. And it's important you get the order right. Just for say you we didn't have that. Um, uh, probably an easier way for some of you might be to do it this way. Put the fraction here, root 72, go down, let me go down, there we go, 2, go down, got to go to the end, go down, there we go, and that's going to be screwed to 43. So have it as you see it, and we get the same answer, which is 0 0.644. not 0 0.644 it is in fact 0 0.6469 bum 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 and you don't round at this stage you mustn't round at this stage so just give ourselves a bit more working space here we go to finish off the question 
bring the calculator back. That is our value for our theta. Sorry, not theta, cos of theta. What we want to do is work out theta. So we've got cos theta equals that, so we have to undo that using the shift cos, the inverse cos of our answer to get our angle. And our angle comes out as 49.68. We're going to round to two significant figures. There's 49 is 2. Look at the third. We always look at the next value. So that's 6. So we're going to round up because this is 5 or more. It's going to be close to 50. So we'll write down our answer as 50 degrees. So our answer for theta is equal to 50 degrees to 2SF, two significant figures.